First story. Entitled Parents Demand. I quit college because my golden twin didn't get accepted in college. And it's unfair for her that I succeed in life faster than her. They even tried to unroll me out of the college. So this is a throwaway account because my siblings are here too. English isn't my native language. So there might be some mistakes. Sorry about that. So I 17F have two older brothers 1921 and a twin sister. I should mention that my family is pretty affluent. Ever since I remember myself, my parents encouraged me and my twin to compete with each other, while they always favored her over me. She always had their support, and I was expected to be considerate. When I succeed at something more than she does, they ask me to give it up, but they never ask this of her. I do love her and my parents, even though I feel like I've been treated unfairly. Both of us have aspired to be doctors for a long time. I studied really hard for it for a long time, and so did she. This year we graduated, and both of us applied for the same programs at the same universities. The process here is quite different than it is in the US. We can start medical school right after high school if we get accepted. She wants to go to the same university as I do, as do my parents. On the other hand, I feel like going on my own and having a separate life from my sisters. I love her so much, but we've been together my entire life. She's an introvert, while I'm an extrovert, so she followed me around most of the time. I always included her and made sure she's happy. But it's been like this our entire lives, and I'm honestly tired. Not to mention that if we go to the same place, I would be expected to study with her and help her get high grades, and I wouldn't be able to study on my own and focus on my success. My parents will be mad if I succeed more than her. It's been like this for the past 12 years, which will eventually hurt me. I just want to finally be a person of my own. This is where I might be the arsehole. I got accepted to four different universities, and she got into two. I waited for her to decide where she wanted to go, and then made my decision like I said, a different place. Then she changed her mind, and said she wants to go to her second option, the one I chose. I said that it's not a problem, and I will go to a different place one she didn't get into. My sister got really offended, and my parents are furious, even though I explained myself politely and said that I love her, but wanted to get a fresh start where nobody knows me. They demanded that I go to the same place as my sister or else they wouldn't pay for my degree. So I said whatever and said that I'd be fine on my own and left it to my grandparents. When they came to talk to me, they just kept on saying how wrong and entitled I was. I really had enough, so I told them I hated them for treating me like this. Now I'm refusing to talk to them and ignoring their calls. My brothers and grandparents are on my side. But everyone else is telling me I'm an arsey hole. Am I? Edit. Thank you so much for the support and ideas. I read all your comments, and they're all very appreciated. My brother got me everything I thought I needed, including my cat. I called the university to ask if my parents can unroll me, and they can. However, since they never paid, it will be difficult for them, and the university can try to delay them until my 18th birthday. My grandparents assured me that they wouldn't let them do something like that. But it's still nice to have a plan B. School starts on Monday, and it looks like it's settled for now. I will update you guys as soon as I have something to say. P.S. I don't feel like talking to them right now. It's like all of the anger I held against them is now very substantial hope I used the right word. And I feel like I need to cool down before deciding what's next they probably can also use some time off. Relevant comment. I think I wrote about it somewhere in the comments. My initial thought was to go to a school that's close to home in order to come back on weekends and be able to help my sister out while still having my own space. After realizing I wouldn't get any space this way, I chose the school I'm going to. It's the best in my country and has nice scholarships, but it's the farthest from home out of all the universities I applied to. I guess it doesn't matter now, so I said yes and did what I wanted to do. Update. Hey everyone, sorry it took some time, but I'm here with an update, I had some problems publishing it. But it's all good now reminding you that English isn't my native language, so there might be some mistakes. So. As I think I said in the comments school started two weeks ago, and so far it's absolutely amazing. I have great roommates, and I love my classes. It's a bit intense, but I'm keeping up. It's truly a dream come true. Well, some things happened. My parents apparently called my university and asked for my schedule. From what I understand, they said that, as my legal guardians, they are entitled to know everything about it. The school told them that if they want my details, they need to come and prove that they are indeed who they claim to be and informed me about it. It happened just a couple of days after the school year started. They haven't contacted me until a week ago. When they asked me to have dinner with them, they even offered to drive to where I am, which is strange as they never even bothered to pick me up from friends, and I agreed. It was on Friday, 
and they reserved places in a fancy restaurant nearby. Dinner went surprisingly well a bit awkward, but they were nice. And then they told me they would pay for my school tuition and everything else I needed, but only if I took a gap year. I refused, obviously. After arguing with me, my dad said that he had enough of my attitude and ungratefulness, left a 200 franc bill and left. I'll admit that I sat there crying for about half an hour before I left with the change as the bill and the tip didn't reach 200 francs, lol. If you're asking yourselves what that was about, then I did too. I talked to my brother. Apparently, my sister decided she doesn't want to go to medical school. She wants to take a vacation to think about the future with a clear mind or something like that. And you guessed it. Almost everyone thinks I should go with her after all, we are twins, and it will only be fair that we'll start studying at the same time. There has been no contact from my parents ever since, but it's kind of okay for me. I got a scholarship, and by the end of the semester I might get another one. My grandparents paid for the rest, they insist that I won't pay them back, but I'm already working on that. My sister answered my messages yesterday. She told me that I hurt her because I didn't want to be with her, and she doesn't know if she can forgive me. I understand her and I do really miss her, but I don't want to give up on my dream. I hope she will understand me someday. So basically, I think things are alright by now. Not much has changed, but I have my grandparents and my friends, so I'm fine. I'll be completely calm only after my 18th birthday, when my parents won't be able to get me out of university. It's really soon, so I'm optimistic. Thank you all for reading and helping me. I really appreciate it. Edit. Thank you all for your comments. I'm on a pretty tight schedule. So I still haven't finished reading, but I promise I'll answer all of them. Since some of you got confused over the francs, we use them in Switzerland. Relevant comments. I actually don't get it either, but it's been like that ever since we were little. There's nothing wrong with her. We're different in some ways, and she's more shy and quiet, but not in an unusual way. She always kind of tagged along with me, and I wasn't allowed to have friends who weren't her friends or go to events by myself. I also helped her study and my parents got upset over me when I got higher grades. My best guess is that they think she'll struggle to be by herself, and that if I do better, it will make her insecure. However, I can't know for sure. I feel like we could have been so much closer if my parents wouldn't push us together all the time. It's a shame, honestly. In a way, I'm glad I can be independent, but I feel bad for my sister that she still struggles. Thank you. I hope things will continue to be great. I want that for my sister too. When asked if their parents made them dress alike. Yes, every single day in elementary school, I felt so ridiculous and begged them to stop in middle school. Second story. OP ran away from his home because of his narcissistic family's constant abuse and neglect. Now they are freaking out. Not because he ran away, but because of what will happen to their family's image. I think it would be easy to mention that I was never the family's favorite. I know there's a stereotype that the youngest sibling gets the most affection from the parents. Maybe it only applies to my family, but that's a complete lie. And I also know why my family treats me like that. They make no secret of it. I wasn't a wanted child for the simple reason that my parents only wanted a boy and a girl. So there are two children and no more. The fact that I was then born as a second son didn't fit into their family's predetermined picture. For this reason, I was always ignored on birthdays. I wasn't even allowed to be in family photos because they wanted to give the impression that their picture book family was the way they had imagined it. They never let go of this image. And just as an aside, compared to my siblings, my parents punished me much more severely for little things. My sister once stole money and was grounded for a week, while I was beaten up for leaving my room at night. I put up with it over the years because, even though my parents didn't really pay attention to me, I always had a good relationship with my siblings. When my eldest brother got married a few years ago, I was still a minor, and even though I was offended, I wasn't allowed to attend the wedding on the grounds that it would be a child free wedding. I was 15 at the time, and no doubt there would have been no reason not to let me attend. Even though I was hurt that I was the only one not allowed to attend, I accepted it. I'm now 19, and my sister wants to get married. She gave birth to a daughter last fall, and she and her partner wanted to get married. I was really looking forward to the wedding, and bought myself a nice suit. At some point however, I received a message from my sister that I couldn't come to the wedding, because they also wanted to have a child-free wedding and they needed someone to look after their daughter, my niece. I knew that wasn't true, as they had a babysitter. The babysitter was a friend of hers who wanted to earn some extra money while she studied. When I pointed this out to her, she explained that the babysitter didn't have time because she had to study. Which was also a lie, by the way, as I had previously sent the babysitter a friend request on Facebook, 
and she even wrote a post on the day of the wedding saying that she was enjoying her day off. I asked her if she had anyone else who could look after the child, as I really wanted to be there after missing my brother's wedding. Suddenly she got angry and told me I was being selfish, and if I were a good brother, I would say yes without argument, and if I didn't say yes, I wouldn't be allowed to come to the wedding under any circumstances. It felt like a punch in the stomach. I couldn't understand why she didn't want me at the wedding. In the end I agreed, but I still contacted my parents again. They also told me not to be so selfish, as the day wasn't about me and my sister was deciding the guest list anyway. Then I also realized for the first time that my attendance was never planned from the beginning, because I was the only one who didn't get an invitation. Yesterday was the wedding, and I cried when I saw all the photos posted in the WhatsApp family group. Everyone had a great time. Even when my sister dropped her daughter off at my place, and I wanted to give her my wedding present, she didn't even give me a glance. She didn't even say thank you. Neither for the present, nor for babysitting. I want out of this family. I love them, but I can't stand being treated like this any longer. I'm about to be promoted at my home office job, and when that happens, I'm going to move far away and break off contact. They'll have the image of their perfect family back that I ruined, and I'll have my peace. A win-win situation for both sides. Comments. Tom and F. Just keep looking forward to the day you'll be rid of them, and never look back. Maybe change your last name too. OP. I thought about that. Do you think I should leave a message? Tom F. Nope. Kim V. Trust me on this. Seriously. Go hard. No contact. Just disappear one day. Let the police quietly know you're fine. This is a choice, so the family doesn't feel the need to pretend they're concerned. One day, they will need something. It will be devastating for them. You will be nowhere to be found living your best life. That is your future, the best life, far away from them. The karma train always rolls around. It may take 40 years, but it does. Trust me on this. I'm wallowing in long overdue karma. Good luck, OP. Plan your escape and future. There's nothing for you here. Feel free to DM. You can do this. Adventurous Road 2085. Why did you babysit for her? If I were you, I would move away, change my number, and don't say anything. OP, I will. But I thought that leaving them a message would at least prevent them from looking for me. Just in case they do care enough. Update. Three days later. I didn't plan to make an update, but so many people asked me to, so here we are. My original post is now three days old, and a few things happened in that time span. Let's start by saying that I followed your advice. I contacted the local police and told them about the situation, just in case anyone was looking for me. One day after I posted it, I packed my things and drove to a friend of mine who lives far away. I haven't seen him in a while, but he agreed to let me stay with him until I have an apartment. And before you ask, I decided not to wait for my promotion. I wanted to get out of there immediately. That was when I started to read all of your comments. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Apparently, my story made it to TikTok as well. But you probably want to know what's up with my family right now. Well, I blocked their numbers. Even though you guys told me not to leave a message, I left one. But not the way you think. My family has a spare key for my apartment. If, for some reason, they care enough to check on me, they find a message in my apartment. I wrote this because I wanted to tell them everything I felt and let them know about their wrongdoings towards me. And to my surprise, my friend got a call from my mom yesterday. I don't know if she found the message or just noticed that I was gone like that. But I assume she did. She said she was worried about me and that she had called every one of my friends because she wanted to know where I was and if he knew where I was. He lied to her and told her he didn't know, and then she hung up. While some could see this as an effort, I know my mom better than anyone else. She is not worried about me. She is worried about her own image and how people would react if they saw how she failed as a parent. However, she was the only one who I know tried to reach out so far. To be fair, I blocked their numbers, so I'm not saying it's entirely impossible. They tried, but still. My friend's mom had invited me to dinner this Sunday. His family was always very welcoming towards me, and I'm just glad I'm not alone. I would also be lying if I said this situation left me cold, because the truth is that I cried for most of the first two nights. I want to leave all of this behind me and start a new life. Thank you for your support. If anything essential happens, I will try to update you. Comments. Bonham 42. Personally, if it were me, and I knew my mother only cared about her image, I would blow them up on social media. They spent years hurting you because of their image. I am glad you got away though. Your family sounds horrible. Dad Gimalcom. I control the narrative. I wouldn't put it past OP's family for them to come up with a story like, 
Oh, he was on drugs and ran away. Third story. OP had enough of her entitled Sill's arrogancy and didn't invite her nieces for the Easter. This spans over a period of almost a year, and there's a backstory. I'm sorry it's so long. Last year, my Sill 36 told me 28F that her daughter's bike was too small and told me that I needed to buy her a new bike that fit her. I don't mind helping out my family. We can financially afford to help and are happy to. After we got her a bike, my Sill asked if the kids could come over for a few hours and ride bikes with mine, and we agreed. After my niece got on her new bike, I took a picture and sent it to her parents, who responded with a vicious text from my Sill accusing me of trying to steal parenting milestones from her, and how I am awful, and I shouldn't be a part of the family. She accused me of teaching her how to ride a bike without training wheels, and how all I do is hurt those around me and cause mental and emotional trauma. I tried explaining to her that the neighborhood kids were the ones to teach her. I only bought the bike, which again my Sill demanded that I do. My Sill told me not to text or call her, because she was too livid, and didn't want to say something that she would regret, and that they would tell us when to send the kids back. I was bewildered. I had her kids at my house, and I didn't know what to do. I talked with a close friend and neighbor, and they confided in me that they were getting scared for the kids. They mentioned some of the things that the kids had said about their home life, and that they had actually just gotten off the phone with CPS because they felt like the kids needed a welfare check on their living situation. Honestly, I agreed with them. But because I had the kids at my house super frequently, I didn't think I needed to call. Four hours later, we finally got a text that they were ready to have us bring the kids back. My husband walked them home. I sent her a response stating that I don't believe in yelling at someone and not allowing for communication. I explained what really happened and that I simply took a picture from my driveway. I also explained that their child had ridden a bike before, as they had ridden my daughter's bike while my Sill and Bill were there, and they saw it. They must have forgotten that she already knew how. I said sorry, and I would love to communicate. I'm not trying to paint myself as a perfect person. I was definitely mad. In anger, I did tell her that it was unfair to put the burden of raising her kids on me, and we understand that they're going through a lot, but that their kids needed their own parents. I was tired of getting yelled at by her for the things that my niece was missing at school, and I was tired of having to foot the bill to take care of them. I have my own kids. I said that I would happily back off. And because I'm backing off, there's important information she needs to know. I told her about the neighbor's CPS call. In hindsight, I definitely know I could have handled it better. I should not have reacted in anger, and I could have been more compassionate. My husband's parents have joined in on the fight. They have all convinced themselves that I am the one who called CPS. I had a very abusive childhood and have never opened up to them about it. One day, I created a new text group with all of my husband's family in it, and I apologized. I told them that I was sorry that I reacted in anger in my response. I tried to clear up the situation as much as possible and explained why communication is so important to me. My Sill then told me, I know you had a rough childhood. That's why we are all trying to show you how a loving family actually works because someone has to teach you. My husband was livid. He told everyone that he was done watching them treat me the way they have. We have tried. We were again met with the silent treatment. Months later, I tried apologizing again. This time I wrote handwritten apologies, an olive branch, and expressed my desire to move forward. I invited them all over for dinner. This broke the silence, and they actually declined, saying they were, too busy, and the kids can play at Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving rolls around, and I thought it went over well no one talked to me, but they all talked to my husband and kids. They ended up cancelling a family Christmas party because, my husband and I are the only ones doing well financially, and it would be too hard. Many things have happened over the past few months to get to now, but I have had a feeling to plan an Easter dinner. I sent out an invitation over a week ago for the 23rd of this month. On the invitation, I put, please RSVP so I can plan for each child. Instead of doing an Easter egg hunt, we're doing a scavenger hunt, and I was planning on having enough clues so each kid can read two of them so everyone feels included. At the end of the scavenger hunt, I was crocheting bunnies. I asked for an RSVP so I could have adequate time to put together over 18 clues for the scavenger hunt and crochet nine bunnies. I asked my Sill if she would help me plan it before I sent out invitations, and she completely ignored my text. I went ahead and took that as a no and sent out invites to everyone in my husband's family. Everyone said yes to coming, except that one Sill. I also sent invites to my side of the family, and they all RSVP'd yes. My in-laws don't know my side is invited. Do I need to tell them? I reached out to my Sill individually a week after I sent the invite, asking if she was going to make it to the event. I also asked a separate question. 
She only answered the other one, and completely ignored my question about the 23rd. Knowing her past history, she is the type of person to not RSVP, and just show up with her four kids and expect to have everything prepared for her. I told my husband that I was not going to entertain that behavior this time. If they show up, we will tell them to be sorry. We weren't expecting your kids. They can participate, but I don't have anything prepared for them other than a bunny. He thinks that I would be in awe if I didn't prepare everything because the kids would miss out. I'm exhausted but ready to hear my judgment. Wibta, update. My sil just texted me. Sorry for the late RSVP, but I finally heard back on a scheduling thing I was waiting on. Yes, we can come to the Easter thing on the 23rd. Also, aunt my husband's aunt, who they live with, and who has cancer says she's planning on attending. But she may wake up that day and not be up to coming. I have heard everyone's responses, and I have been looking up Greg Sting. I promise to update you all on how the event goes, and I also promise that this will be the last time I plan to get together. The backbone is growing, I swear. It's hard since we built our house close to my in-laws, who are all neighbors, so we can help out in their old age. Like I mentioned above, my husband's aunt has pancreatic cancer, and his parents are often sick. My Phil has a degenerative joint disease, so up until my Sil moved in with my husband's aunt, we were helping out to take care of them. Then she moved in, and we figured they would take over some of the care they haven't, but they also won't let us. I am coming to terms with the loss of family that I want my children to have, but I am now more aware of the example of what is okay that I'm showing them. Comments. Kimriya. What you need to do is stop inviting his family. Ever. It sounds like you're being a doormat. Stop trying to win their approval. You won't get it. What you will get is hurt feelings and disrespect. But if you feel those kids will show up, you would be the one to not prepare. Don't punish kids for their parents. It sounds like they get enough of a bad deal. Just don't invite them at all next time. NTA. Not right not wrong 15. This. She's just inviting almost begging for people who do not contribute, ignore her, and bring nothing but negativity to her world. Why? I'd be damned if someone came into my house and ignored me. They can do that somewhere else. And if the husband wants his sister's kids to have bunnies, he can knit them himself. The sister and ungrateful family members can kick rocks. Judgment. NTA. Update. Thirteen days later. All right. Here's an update now that the event has passed. Since my sill finally RSVP'd right before the event, I ended up going all out to make sure everyone was included and had a great time. Each kid had three clues in the scavenger hunt so 30 clues, and they demolished it in 30 minutes. One of my nephews ended up being a complete menace to my daughter. He was chasing her with a squirt bottle and kept spraying her glasses. When my daughter told an adult, she was told that she just needed to suck it up because the older boy cousin was having a fun time and he doesn't get to come over very often, so let him have fun. I had no idea that was told to her by her grandma Mill. I was in a different room, running a cotton candy machine in the garage. I've since talked to my daughter and we've discussed that it was inappropriate behavior and grandma was wrong. On top of that, I didn't get a single, thank you, or good job. I had my mill help with a few of the clues for the scavenger hunt. And after it was all done, my sill had the audacity to say, Good job, grandma. Then they completely ignored me and didn't say anything about the hard work I had put in. After the scavenger hunt, my sill complained that her toddler's Easter bunny, I made didn't have safety eyes or a nose installed, and how I messed it up and I'm going to cause a fight with her children. I tried explaining without apologizing that it isn't recommended to put safety eyes and noses on stuffed animals for children under three. My nephew is one, and I didn't think it would be smart to put eyes on it, especially when the kind that I have can come apart if pulled hard enough. But I'm the villain for making it different. She didn't believe me and talked about how I made her life more difficult, because now she's going to have to embroider eyes on it. Just like Thanksgiving, I was ignored by all my in-laws. My mom came because I invited her and in her quest to be the world's best grandma, she brought a cotton candy machine. The kids were thrilled. Her and I had a good time attempting to figure out how it worked and got completely covered in cotton candy. My in-laws thought it was the worst idea possible. How could giving the children sugar be a good idea? They all left after cotton candy, after spending just an hour and a half over. My Phil complained that there were extra guests over, and he couldn't have the family meeting that he told everyone except my spouse and me that we were going to have. AKA, he couldn't ambush me and have the entire family tell me what I've done wrong to them this past year. Everyone complained about every little detail of the event, and no one helped me plan it when I asked. I am officially done. I'm exhausted, I'm frustrated, and I'm hurt. This is definitely the last event that I will ever plan for them. Comments. 
Secret Double Nineing 239. You need to stop inviting or letting these people attend these events. Because, when you think back on these moments, you won't remember you and your kids or family having a good time. No, you'll remember being pissed off at the in-laws. Ducker 74. I would go to NC with them all. It sounds like you did an amazing job. Maybe get parents in the neighborhood to help and do it for all the kids next year. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.